handling. This is good, look at it. I'm throwing that around. That is something that is ABARTH DNA. You can't, you know, you can't fake that. Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to Seth AB TV. Welcome to the brand new Abarth 500E. This is a video I've been dying to make for an awfully long time. Ever since they unveiled the 500E, I've been very intrigued to get behind the wheel of it and see what it's like. So I'm gonna come out and say it right away. I think Abarth, when it first launched, when I really got involved with the brand back in, well, I joined it in 2016 when I started my YouTube channel, I would say those are the Abarth glory days. I think since then, Abarth has lost their way a bit. They peaked at the Biposto and then really, if I'm completely honest, all I've really seen from them over the last, well, God knows how many years have been kind of parts bin specials. We've always wanted something different. And right here, this is different. So some quick facts and figures. You get four trims at the moment in the UK. You get a 500E base spec, which is £34,000. You get a 500E base in uh, um, convertible mode, which is £37,000. You then go to the top spec, which is the Turismo, which comes in at £38,000. And if you want a Turismo convertible, it's going to cost you £41,000. So right off the bat, that is expensive for a new car. It's expensive for what is ultimately a hot hatch. So in terms of the power, what do we get from this? So we have a 42 kilowatt hour battery. It's the same as the 500E. However, you get a much bigger motor. So you get a 113 kilowatt hour motor, uh, which effectively produces 152 brake horsepower and 235 newton meters of torque. Range on this car will be between 150 and 164 uh, miles per gallon. Uh, miles per gallon, that's not even a thing now, is it? Uh, 164 range. Um, and obviously that's also dependent on the trim. If you go for the uh, convertible one and the top spec one, uh, obviously I think it's more weight on the convertible, hence why you get less range. And also you get 18 inch wheels on the top spec Turismo. Zero to 62 miles per hour is in seven seconds flat. So that's 0.3 seconds faster than the old car. However, Abarth have been pretty keen to tell us that the uh, zero to 25 miles per hour is a second quicker than the old car. Now, sound generation. Generator. This car comes with a sound generator, which I will show you in a, in a moment. Hate it or love it, let's be honest, most modern cars do have uh, engine sounds pumped into the cabin. This Abarth have done it on the basis of trying to keep some kind of character. Now, some may think that's a bit gimmicky. However, I think it's pretty cool, if I'm honest with you. It does sound reasonable. However, over time, uh, uh, you'll see when I start driving it, it could be... Uh, I guess it can be a little bit annoying, but you can turn it off if you don't like it. Abarth has said they've invested over 6,000 hours in developing this sound. Um, so let's see how it goes when we start driving it. Listen to the sound when you start it up. So we've got the button here. Little like electric guitar sound. And all of a sudden you can hear a familiar noise. If I lower the window down a bit here, have a listen and I can rev it. A bit of rev hang, but hey, look, this is not a combustion engine. We're at zero, foot to floor, 30, 40, 50, 60. That initial pickup is is pretty good. It's, it's got some nice squirt to it. It's quite nippy, it's a nippy thing. Once you get to kind of like 50 odd miles per hour, I think that's where it kind of starts to die a little bit. But I think that's true to be said around most EVs unless you've got bigger batteries. But in terms of kind of how it feels to sit in, it feels really nice. It's a really nice driving position. The steering feel is really good. I'm gonna to touch on the sound in a bit, bear with me handling as you'd expect you can ping this thing around corners and it will do what you want it to do they haven't lost the handling because this obviously does come with uh, the upright suspension it's not the same as the fiat 500 it's much better the brakes no one behind me good brakes and you get that hazard thing which is just an abarth thing now i'm in scorpion track which basically means no regen i want i don't want to be slowed down so it feels good guys it does feel good to drive when you're pushing on it's it's fun that's what abarths are all about right you throw it in there's no understeer it's good. I mean, you can see I'm smiling. That's always a good thing to say, isn't it? When it comes to an Abarth 500E or an Abarth in general. 
I think it's definitely, definitely got some of the characteristics that we're all used to, that we're all very used to. Now, let's talk about the sound. Is it a gimmick? I think that it's, it is to a point, but I think I value it because this is one of the first EVs that I've driven where I've kind of like really enjoyed driving it because I get some more emotion through that sound. Yes, it's a sound generator, but in most of these you get nothing. So like cruising at 30, foot to floor, we get that noise. Now, this is where it becomes a problem because when you, when you let off the accelerator, it just sounds like you're in the wrong gear. It's like, you know when you hold like the top end of third, it's like you're always holding the top end of the third. It's like naturally, subconsciously, I'm like, okay, cool, let me put it into fourth. But you don't have that in an EV. And actually, I think that's something to be said that that's a good thing because for me to kind of naturally think, okay, I need to change gear because the engine sounds like it's hanging is testament to how decent the engine sound is. And I, and, and I think it is still a bit gimmicky and I know why Abarth have done it because they really want to try and push people into this space. Has it worked? I think it's worked to an extent. I, I'm not fully sold on it. We have all said we need something different. We need a new chassis, we need new interior. We need it to feel like a car, not a toy. This feels like a car. Is it perfect? No, it's definitely not. It handles great. It's not the fastest thing out there. It's quick enough for you to have some fun in. You can chuck it around. The seating position, the driving experience is great. Three driving modes in Turismo, you can just kind of cruise along at lower power for when you don't want to hoon it around. But for me, just put it in Scorpion track and have some fun. Like I said, handling, this is good, look at it. I'm throwing that around. That is something that is Abarth DNA. You can't, you, know, you can't fake that. I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and, and say that it's not good at that because it is, it really is. And you can see by the smile that I'm kind of emitting. Yes, it's probably not as wild as a smile that I would do in a modified, a 595 comp with a bigger turbo, but that's all this is. I mean, look at this, look. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. And yeah, the... <laughs> yeah, I like it. I do like it. I think these B road, these, these kind of back roads, uh, kind of that, that B road muncher, I think, this is what this car is, is fun at doing. You know, I definitely can absolutely say that I would be quite happy to take one of these out on a weekend drive, just not too far. So to put it into perspective, so I've been driving this car relatively hard. Uh, I started off at 150 uh, miles of range. Uh, my journey from uh, the hotel to effectively camping in the machine is uh, about 30 miles. I've, I've got 100 miles to go. So, so that is the thing to worry about is that, you know, you will, if you drive it like a lunatic, which realistically what, what you would do in an ad bar the majority of the time, I mean, look at this, this is good, this is good. Um, you're gonna run out of range really quickly. So in reality, that 150, I reckon is much closer to like 120. I do like it. I, I would probably go and buy one of these. If I'm into tuning, if I'm into the modification scene, that's something that you've just got to get over yourself. Or just accepting you know, that this is absolutely fine, accept that this car will not be for you. That pure, hardcore, die-hard petrol head, this will give you an element of that. It will still give you fun. It will give you some sound, you know. It's not like it's a muted car. It's, you know, and when you're really pressing on, you don't, you, you instinctively do, you kind of forget, you know, you forget that you're in an EV, like the sound. The sound is good. It's just unconventional. It's not. It's not what you're used to. But it is different. The power out of corners is is great, and I can see why. You know, it's quicker out, uh, around the Balocco test track than a normal 695. Because with the EV, you get that instant punch. You get instant performance. And whilst this is only 152 miles per hour, I'll just slow it down. We're into a beautiful. Only 152 uh, brake horsepower, sorry. It's, there's an argument to say it's enough for the majority of people on the road. You know, Abarth are saying, you know, it's all about more, 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 more. Well, I think they've definitely delivered more than a lot of what the old car used to deliver. You know, interior, miles better, miles better. Steering feel, 
seating position. Like I said, it's, I feel like I'm driving a car. I don't feel like this. You know, if you remember the old car, it was like that. You know, and, and, that and that was kind of uncomfortable. This, it's good. It is good. And, and I, I find myself wanting to attack corners like this. And I don't normally want to do that in an EV. So, so there is definitely something to be said that it is, it is giving me that urge to, to have some fun in. And I am having fun. I really am. So as we kind of uh, enter this little village, I thought I'd lower the windows down and just let you listen. So just have a listen to the kind of sound from, I guess, what people hear outside. Just doing that, if you don't know cars, this sounds like a flipping combustion engine car. It's cool, look. Slow down again, look. <laughs> oh, I do like this. It's at that point where I'm like, I should be changing gear, but, but I'm not. Um, uh, but look, like I said, in summary, I, I do like this car. I really do. The negatives of this car, for me anyway, are, um, is, it, is it enough to tempt existing owners who like more performance out of their current? I'm not so sure. Is it enough to tempt normal people? When I say normal people, people who aren't interested in the modification scene into one from what they're currently doing, 100%. Providing they are willing to see that kind of steep price hike. That, that is the biggest problem of all of this. And I've got no doubt as time goes on and more factories are built and the cost to, EV, cost to produce EVs comes down, these will become more and more cheaper and ultimately better and better. And also the infrastructure will get better and better. So I do think it's, it's very early days for Abarth as a brand for electrification. We are closing a chapter in combustion. Sad times but that is what it is what it is and we're opening a, a new one in electrification and for a first stab for Abarth to produce this which handles really really well it's fun it's not going to break land speed records but actually there is something to be said about being able to drive a slow car fast rather than a fast car slow it just makes you smile that little bit more um, like I said the handling I can't get over the handling look at this right hander fully in look in there look at that no oh yes that is cool <laughs> you don't get that from a lot of evs so you know well done well done Abarth. Um, i i think 90 percent of this car i love genuinely i love it but there are a couple of things that i just don't